Good afternoon and welcome to episode 912. Um, topic today, because this is the Saturday after Thanksgiving, is did you survive Thanksgiving or did you thrive over Thanksgiving? And I'll explain what that means, especially around relationships, about family, about life itself. Um, and if you're feeling a bit stuck, I may have some ideas for you. Before I jump into all of that, <coughs> excuse me, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks. Um, my name is Barry Selby. Hi, thanks for joining me. I am an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, um, author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, and a great book I recommend highly for singles and couples, men and women. I am biased. Um, I'm also a relationship and love expert helping women create balance in love, life, and business. That's because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which informs my work with women. And also what started these talks or inspired these talks or forced these talks um, about three years ago called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. Today we're episode number 912, 912. And the topic today is about, um, it's like a, what's the one looking for? It's like looking at the results of a, no, there's, there's a, I, was, I had a metaphor that dropped in my head and it just dropped out again. Okay. Happy Thanksgiving or happy post Thanksgiving and happy Black, post Black Friday. This is, this is Small Business Saturday and then there's Cyber Monday. So we're in the middle of everything right now. But I want to check in with you and see how you're doing and actually ask how you're doing and have you check in with yourself regarding if you're <laughs> happier now than you were before Thanksgiving if it's more of a relief that you got through Thanksgiving or if it's actually that things happened over Thanksgiving that were really good. Did you have a good time? Did you have a nice time? Did you have family issues? Did you have relationship challenges? Did you have all that sort of stuff? The reason I'm speaking about this is one is because this is a lesson opportunity because I like teaching from that place. Secondly, um, there's a repeat of this coming up next month called Christmas where things might happen again. So I'm giving you some thoughts, tips, ideas now that might be able to play out for you going forward into the Christmas holidays in a month, less than a month, in fact. So where do I want to begin? Where do I want to begin? I'll speak for myself just to be transparent. Um, I've never had a Thanksgiving with my family because they're back in England, so that's a, that's a moot point. But I've had a lot of orphan Thanksgivings, like Friendsgivings, they call it, of different people. And in fact, this past Thursday, I was with friends having a wonderful Thanksgiving chat, conversation, enjoyment. And then last time we had another dinner there to use up with all the leftovers. So we had to do it with two days. And for me, that's one of the gifts in a way I have, the blessings that I don't have family over here. Um, now, if I had a family of my own, it might be different, but I haven't got a family of my own. But having my own family overseas, in, back in England and also in Italy, Thanksgiving isn't a family thing for me. It's a friend's thing for me, which is a, which is a massive blessing, to be, blunt, to be blunt. Because I know enough stories from friends of mine who have gone home for Thanksgiving in the years past and this year, where coming home is a relief to be away from all that because they're realizing they don't fit in their environment again. One thing experience, one thing I want to talk about is you may realizing more and more how once you've lived your life more fully and you embrace and embody your own way of being in the world, going home is kind of a constraining experience. You have to sort of diminish yourself to fit into that environment. I know that's one experience I've had going home to see family, just period. So the reason I'm speaking about surviving versus thriving is because I, I did teach, speak, talk about things before Thanksgiving about how you could thrive through Thanksgiving. If you didn't do that, maybe we'll go back on what's the replay from earlier this, this past week because it was kind of intending to give you some insight, some inspiration and some guidance so you can actually have a good Thanksgiving. For me personally, um, I wanted to make sure you had what you wanted. And now we're after Thanksgiving, it's kind of like doing a post-mortem. That was the word I was looking for earlier, post-mortem. Because sometimes going through Thanksgiving can be a really um, wonderful, interesting experience with your family. It's all good. And sometimes going home to see your family is one of the most heinous things and most painful things you can go through, just to be clear. Um, especially if one, you've outgrown them, as I mentioned. Secondly, is if you go home to see your family and realize that, that where they are, there's some history that you don't want to go back and face. And that was one of the things I talked about earlier in the week. The, the challenge for a lot of people is they're not willing to face those things. If I've got to talk, I think brewing for tomorrow about um, facing your pain or numbing your pain. And this is kind of what I'm, I'm, I'm leading to that now, I guess. So the Thanksgiving is such a wonderful place to play, a wonderful experience to go through, a wonderful event to be at, as long as the environment you do your Thanksgiving celebration in is a comfortable, uplifting, 
and happy environment. But for many people, Thanksgiving is a place to go home and basically um, con contain themselves because they're not safe, they don't feel safe around their family. Women go home to, sit to uh, family dynamics where there's abuse in the history in the family dynamics from neighbors or from parents or from siblings where being home, that stuff's under the surface. You may be an adult now, but the child part of you is still very present. And this is the thing about Thanksgiving. It's a very child-connected energetic if you're an adult going back to see family because you, there's, there's a tendency on some level to revert back to that experience of childhood, and that can be challenging. So I'm not going to recap everything I said before earlier in the week because you can go back and watch, watch the replays, and I'll tell you at the end where the replays are so you can watch them. But I do want to speak about how you feel now. This is Saturday, by the way, when it's the casual attire, post-Thanksgiving. And we are in the middle of the different uh, retail sale type experiences with Black Friday and then Sub Monday. But I want to speak more to the emotional level. It's easy to start distracting ourselves. This is the thing I'm going to talk about as well. It's easy to distract ourselves at Thanksgiving by imbibing in the alcohol or doing other things to avoid stuff. It's also an easy way to distract ourselves to go shopping and trying to numb ourselves out by getting things that might please us. I'm inviting you to look deeper than that. I'm in fact inviting you to be willing to face your own demons, <laughs> so to speak, to really understand that what you're dealing and facing, what you're dealing with and facing, is an, is your own um, opportunities to become better at being yourself. Now, this is going to mean this is kind of a lightweight talk, but I'm dropping some truth bombs in it because I've talked about this a lot in my work. And one of the things I'm very passionate about with my clients is helping them remember who they are own themselves before they have a healthy relationship. Well, a couple of memes I posted today, you might want to watch the memes on my wall, I posted a few of them, about how to be in love with yourself before you get into a relationship. And that challenges when you go home and see family, we can, you can, it's possible to forget that self-supportive, um, I don't want to say protection, but a recognition of who you are. Because when you do, do go home and see family, if, and of course it's Saturday, you might still be seeing family because it might be the whole weekend. But if you're in the place where you're seeing family and you're forgetting to love yourself first, it can be easy to caught up in what's happening around you and be very distracting from your own um, comfort. It's not a pretty topic, I know. When people talk about Thanksgiving, it's always like, it's wonderful, it's all great, it's all easy. But I'm talking about the fact that for a lot of people, Thanksgiving brings up stuff. You know, that lovely stuff that's called pain, wounds, history, memories, etc. that are in the way of you having what you want. And if you're somebody who's done this year after year after year, maybe it's time to change for the, for the next one. Now, I don't want to, don't, I'm not suggesting you wait for the next November to do it, but I'm suggesting that maybe you look at your family dynamic and really get clear about what doesn't work. Be willing to face the negativity, not with the family, excuse me, when you're on your own. <laughs> Be willing to face your own, um, as I said, demons in a way, those own dark memories that are in the way of you having what you want. Because Thanksgiving can be a place where you can thrive. But it starts with taking care of yourself. And when you really honor and respect and appreciate who you are, that's when things start to shift. The deeper level is to go through and face those painful moments rather than numbing them out through whatever that, the poison you choose, you know, choose your poison type thing. So my invitation is to look at that. And, and I'm making this um, a somewhat short broadcast because I, I, I just want to drop this teaching in a simple way because it feels like somebody out there needs to hear this. And most people watch my broadcast, I don't think dealing with this anymore, but some people might be, so this is for them. Um, so feel free to share it with them. <laughs> of course, you might be careful because they're gonna say, you think that about me? Okay, I'm distracting myself. So, and this is basically, this in a way I'm using Thanksgiving as a, as a leverage point because frankly, every experience that is not healed, this is the way from you having what you want, is gonna be dragging you away from your heart and dragging you away from your ability to be loving. That family dynamic that you have at Thanksgiving might be one of those triggers, it might be something else, it's, it's all possible. My invitation to you, my encouragement to you, my recommendation to you, is to be brave enough, having the courage of heart to take a good look at your own wiring that's in the way of you having what you want. When you look clearly, when you see at what it is that's in the way, then loving yourself becomes easier because you start to realize, one, that you're human, so you don't start thinking you're superhuman, you're gonna be special, 
So when you know you're human, secondly, you start to really recognize that you deserve the love that you've been giving to other people. It's the whole of the teaching I can bring in here, I guess. We as human beings sometimes think, sometimes we, some, we sometimes think, but sometimes. That was interesting. Okay. We often <laughs> think about other people as deserving more love than we are. Especially happens around Thanksgiving. There's a, there's a rule book somewhere that somebody wrote that nobody reads that sometimes our love must go to the family, not to ourselves. Or we give more than we get. That wiring that's not working for us. And I've been talking about this quite a bit recently and being adamant about this self-love focus is that we, do, we, we, we deserve our own love, first of all. I would say we, we almost require our own love. And that love that we give to ourselves is a requirement for you to be able to be loved by somebody else and for you to love somebody else. That is a dance that people forget because they fall in love with somebody else and then we go looking for them to complete us. And that trap of codependency, that belief that we're not whole, is an absolute error in approach. So recognizing that maybe you aren't loving yourself fully first is the first step. Because awareness is always the first step. When you become aware of something, you can change it. If you're not aware of it, you can't change it. It's that simple. So I'm going to put some things in the comments because it's, this is the holiday weekend. Um, the self-love meditation I'm going to put in there as a reminder because if you are not loving yourself fully, if you're not embracing who you are and appreciating loving who you are, it's not somebody else's job to do it first. It's your jo job to do it first for yourself so you can then be more loved by other people. It also creates a much healthier place so you do not fall into the trap of codependency. I talked about that one before recently too, so you can watch that broadcast. And it gives you a platform or a foundation where you can stand on your own two feet. I'm biased because it works. I'm biased because I know it's the truth that all of our work is that when we love ourselves, the more we can have what we want. So my self-love practice will be in the comments. I'm also gonna put a reminder in there that this is this holiday weekend I'm offering single session coaching because I don't normally do that. Normally it's three months, six month commitment, but because some people want to tune up or a quick touch connect in to get what they want, I'm offering single session coaching this weekend as my offer. You can just buy one session versus a whole three, four, six month coaching. Um, because you just may not want to do a full three months, six month commitment. Normally I would say no, but this time I'm saying, you know what, just for the holiday weekend, because it is a you know sale weekend, I'm gonna offer single sessions. Not discounted, sorry, but they are worthwhile. So that'll be in the comments as well. So those two things will be in the comments, as I mentioned. Um, I'll put a link in the comments also to have a conversation with me, because if you wanna go deeper, yeah, if you want, <laughs> just checking to myself if that was lining up. If you wanna go deeper with yourself and get some support and you wanna find the best path to go through, I'll put the link in the comments to have a chat with me, which is a free chat. So there'll be a purchase of a coaching session if you want it, or a free chat you can sign up for as well. Different that different d delivery, different timing, both useful. So I'll put those three things in the, in the comments. You can check those things out um, once I sign off. This is this is about it, I think, for this topic. But I want to tell you where to find the replays. Um, Tomorrow's topic is going to be more more interesting because it's going to be this in another level, but I want to speak to it then. That's why I want to set up this talk first. So if you haven't seen my broadcast before, this is my daily contribution to the conversation about love and relationships. Um, sometimes they're easy, sometimes they're hard. Usually they're channel. This one was a bit more clunky for me energetically, just to be transparent. Um, but I do these talks every day and have done now for, say, for three years. You can, you can watch me live on my personal page on Facebook, which is facebook.com slash Barry Selby. Um, every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, seven days a week. Yes, every day, seven days a week. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, you can watch the replays on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. You can like my page and watch them there, although they're not always visible there because Facebook has a bad habit of not displaying all seven, all 900, sometimes it'll be 500 or whatever it's gonna be. However, if you go to my YouTube channel, all of the broadcasts are there nicely stacked in order from oldest to newest, where the titles are there, and you can search them and everything else. To find them, you go to my, you go to youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, that's my channel. Subscribe to my channel, again, youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. There's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine. Subscribe to my channel, watch them there. They're listed by titles. You can do keyword searches, search by words, whatever you want to do on that. Um, hi, Janie, nice to see you. So that's really where you find my broadcast. This talk is just, it's, it's gonna push some buttons, I know, because I really want to bring to home the fact some people go through Thanksgiving where they're like holding on for dear life, they get through the other side of it. And some people go through Thanksgiving, like it's a blast, it's joyful. And I said, I had a good one because I was with friends. You know, I chose who I was gonna be with. 
When you go for Thanksgiving, sometimes you don't have a choice. You've got to see family. And if you don't have a good, healthy relationship with them, it can be torture. So I hope this made sense. Um, if you have any questions, comments, you can put them below. If you want to reach out to me for support, you can message me. Again, there'll be links in the comments for you to choose it after I sign off. And um, that's about it. I'm going to be back in tomorrow with a different topic, a bit more specific and pinpointed. So join me tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. And thank you for watching this one and appreciate you being with me. And as always, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow.